Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video on the channel. Today I've got a couple of little things to go over relating to some recent news that came out of Fallout 76, including all of the 4-star legendary effects, the changes to the events, which I kind of freaked out at first, thinking they were going to destroy some of them. They still might, we never know, it is Bethesda. And there is also a little leaked kind of communication between what I believe is a new light ally coming to the game in the form of like the pet. Obviously this is a little bit off, pets have been delayed, but it's a little insight into what to expect. So before we jump in, if you enjoy the video or find it informative, hit that like button, support the channel. And of course guys, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Alright, so first things first is the new 4 star legendary effects. There is a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 of them. And they're all somewhat alright. I haven't had a full read through all of them. I'm very tight on time at the moment. So we're going to go over them right now. So the first one is the Bruises Legendary Mod. Now, with this one you get plus 15% damage and plus 25% damage resistance after bashing an enemy something kind of all right if you're using a minigun maybe and um, but apart from that uh, i don't know for melee as well i suppose next one up is heavy hitters legendary mod this gives power attacks a 50 percent chance to cause an explosion kind of similar to some legendary uh, uh legendary perks that one so not too bad i suppose if you are a um, melee build there as well Next up is one called Warmongers uh, Legendary Mod. This is plus 150% damage on the next hit within 15 seconds of a kill, which is a pretty, pretty mad one. 150% is pretty solid. After that's Critical Healers, which is landing critical hits, restores your health, kind of like the Medic's Legendary effect. And then there's Cheerleaders, which is killing an enemy, restores your teammates' EAP, which is... I don't know, I kind of feel like that one would be a bit pointless for most people, probably not going to be used a lot. There's another one called Blood Healers Legendary Mod, killing an enemy heals your teammates, very similar to some of the ones we've had on the standard uh, main star effect there. And then after that we've got Persisting Legendary Mod, which is plus 15 max action points. Uh, yeah, yeah, read that right. I thought I didn't there. Next after that, Invigorating, which is increased AP regeneration for yourself and your teammates. So as you can see, a lot of these are kind of pushing that team player. A lot of them's including your teammates, which is kind of strange. It seems to be a running theme in the ongoing direction, especially with these new um, quality of life improvements that we're getting in the next update, which I covered in the one of the last videos I did. After that, we've got Guardians Legendary Mod, which increases nearby allies' elemental resistances by 10, which, uh, yeah, I don't see that one being used a lot either. Next up is Elusive Legendary Mod, which increases your jump height, reduces sprint AP cost, and replenishes some AP when you're at low health. Not too bad, I suppose. Uh, next up, Daredevils, which is reduces AP cost for sprinting by 10% while in combat. Very good if you're a melee build. Uh, next up, uh, Collectors, which is magazine and bobblehead effects last 20% longer. Um, pretty good, to be fair, for farming XP and stuff. And uh, also, if you like doing end game stuff where you're using the bobbleheads and, of course, the magazines to get that extra buffs against, say, the Queen or Earl. And then uh, the last one there is Hauler's Legendary Mod, which gives you plus 10 carry weight. So all round, nothing really massively standing out for me, but I don't know, maybe maybe there'll be some good ones. Maybe you've got different opinions. Let me know in the comments. Now, there's a couple of things about these as well. So once you make a weapon four star, it's no longer tradable. So, you know, if you've got all these people, that's probably got like legacies and all of a sudden they're like, oh, I might put on, I don't know, one of these legendary effects. All of a sudden, that legacy is no longer tradable. So it's kind of like a trick. All of a sudden, you can't trade your fancy weapons. If you've got a bloody 25-25 fixer and you stick on max action points, which is the persistent legendary mod, all of a sudden, you can't trade it. So maybe it's a way to kind of cut down on the RNG and stuff. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, of course, this has also been delayed till next year. But people are testing with them in the PTS as we speak. Also, to actually add these on, you need something called a, a Legendary Shard, which I don't know much information on as of yet, but it's something new coming to the game, another thing probably we have to grind for. Um, but yeah, so each one you'll actually get a certain shard to modify your weapon, if I'm not 
uh, wrong. Um, basically, this specific shard, so you could get like a Blood Healer's Legendary shard, that would give you the Blood he Healer's Legendary mod on that weapon. So you get to pick and choose which one you want, and then all of a sudden, as soon as you choose one, it's no longer tradable. Going to the next little thing which I found, shout out to Reasonable Madness who shared this in my Discord. Uh, this is a little chat thing between a Doberman, which is a type of dog if you don't know, um, which is a, a quest for a light dog, so a camp light ally I'm presuming that means. It also says ATX in the title, which usually means Atomic Shop, so bit of a worrying one there. Obviously if we're getting pets you're going to have to buy them by the look of it maybe, but obviously known Bethesda do normally give you a free one as well. But as you can see there's a little chat that says, hey girl are you looking for someone? What's wrong girl? Are you lost? Oh not another flea ridden mutt. Do you want to live here girl? Because I love that. You can stay here if you like. It's a bit creepy to be fair <laughs> reading through it. And it says, well if you're going to stay, try not to make a mess. And then got anything for me girl? Want to chat? And then dog treat. I've got some canned dog food for you. Who's a good dog? You're a good dog. You're a bad dog. Very bad. <laughs> There's some weird stuff. Uh, you are neither good nor bad. You just are. That's all I wanted to say. We'll talk later. <laughs> that's some different dialogue for the uh, new Doberman quest that's going to be coming into the game in the future. It's very brief, very basic, but it's probably going to be a bit of a wait off before we get pets. Obviously, it's been delayed till next year, so we'll just have to wait till we get more information on that. Now, going into the event stuff to finish off the news for this video. Basically, in the event, let me get it up on screen. Okay, so we're on this different screen now, and this is all the changes for the event that you can see on screen now. So these are the public balance adjustments. We've got Campfire Tales, Line in the Sand, Project Paradise, Radiation Rumble, Swarm of Suitors, and Tea Time. Campfire Tales was previously dying down too quickly, which could cause the event to feel too easily. The campfire will now last a little longer, giving you and your event mates some more time to feed its flames. Don't know why you... I, I don't know. Um, free range also. The Brahmin during this event were too fragile, so we've beefed up their resistances to help them survive more easily. I don't know about you guys, but I've never struggled with the Brahmin dying in free range, so it's a pointless thing. Are they really listening? Who knows? Land in the Sand, this event was taking a bit too long. I would agree with this one, although it was good for XP, or is good for XP, and they've shortened the overall time down to 10 minutes. They did this in the past with... Um, the, oh my god, what's it called, where the Wendigo comes at the end, up on the top right, at uh, Thingy and Sons. Oh my god, there's an event up there, uh, Night, Night something or another, I can't remember off the top of my head. But they did this with one of them, where you could basically farm it for half an hour, get loads of legendaries, now it only lasts like 10 minutes or something. And then, after that we've got Project Paradise, to help reduce the difficulty of Project Paradise, we're lowering the amount of food required to 15 per rank, we're also adding some more resistances to the friendly creatures, that spawned during the event. Now Radiation Rumble, one that I was really worried about, the change in this, to encourage more players to participate in the All Collection objective, we're lowering the requirements to 5, 15, 30, and 50 or for reward tiers, one fruit to four respectively, which is kind of strange. Like you can do one run and collect 20 odd or so. It's going to make it extremely easy on that front, I suppose, but it's very good because a lot of people don't collect the all, they just do the XP, including myself, because it's fantastic for XP. So, never mind. Uh, the event no longer ends immediately when you reach the final collection tier, so you can continue to defend against enemy waves until 8 minute event time expires. Now that, that is game changing. So you can go in there, collect all the all you need, and it'll still go on for 8 minutes. That is mint. Thank you, Bethesda. That's actually really good. Then finally, we've doubled the scavengers' resistances to make them more survivable. Not too bad, not too shabby at all. After that, we've got Swarm of Suitors. We've addressed a number of bugs that could prevent players from receiving the highest tier of rewards and successfully completing the event. We've also made some design adjustments to help smooth out the experience while playing through Swarm of Suitors. My alert attack waves now each have two timers, an initial timer and a last chance timer. Players must kill all enemies in a wave before the last chance timer expires or my alert queen will spawn resulting in event failure now normally the myling the my alert queen will spawn you kill it you win so i don't know tea time while we do not while we did not feel that tea time was overly difficult which it really isn't so i don't know why you've bothered changing anything to do with tea time it could end in failure too quickly at times as a result we've increased the health for two of the free pipes so that they match the sturdiest one 
Now, did anyone struggle with tea time? Be honest, guys, we'll not judge you. But honestly, tea time is not a hard event, so I don't understand. Additionally, radants and ticks can no longer spawn during the event, and we've slightly increased the enemy spawn rate to keep up the action. Increase the enemy spawn rate on all events, please. For the love of God, that's what people want. That's what the community wants. Just do it. Anyways, guys, that is it for the news. I hope you all did enjoy. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and there we have it. That's all the updated stuff on the four-star legendaries. So a little bit of dialogue with the pets coming in it's later on next year, and then, of course, the event changes. Hope you all did enjoy. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. Big, 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 big